What's up guys? So today we have a quick one. This is a little Asus Vivo book and apparently it has no power. I like all the pink stickers on it. We've got the power supply set to 19 volts and let's see what happens when we plug it in. So it's pulling one milliamp. This top thing right here, so that's my power supply and then the one under it, that's my multimeter, the blue one. So the red stuff, that's all voltage and current draw on my power supply. So it's clearly not charging because it's not pulling any current or close to any current and it's not doing anything. All right, so we got the laptop open. The charging port is over here on this side and I already see the input MOSFETs here. We got one big and one small one right after some coils and we also have shunt resistor there. So obviously that's going to be our first test. Let's turn this thing around. So I'm just gonna measure quickly the voltage on the battery between here and here. And of course it's completely dead. Got one millivolt, so that's not gonna do anything for us. All right, so we got a classic input circuit here. It's always very obvious the first two MOSFETs on these things are right up front next to the charging port generally and then you'll have sometimes some like coils between the charging port and the first input MOSFET. We also have the shunt resistor here and you can see these two lines coming off of either side of the shunt resistor. These are going over to probably a charger chip, very likely a BQ chip in order to detect how much current is coming into the laptop. So this is very, very common layout. Sometimes you'll have two of the same sized MOSFETs, but you will also often have like one large and one small like this. So let me just first get the battery unplugged. Always a good idea before starting to work on things even though this thing is like completely dead. Still not a bad call. And I wanna see how this thing behaves when the charger's plugged in without the battery. All right, let's plug the charger in. Let's see if we get any kind of voltage on here. Yeah, so we got 19 volts coming in. What about to here? 19 volts, what about here? And of course we have absolutely nothing unless I'm not making a good connection, but it does not appear that we have anything. So why is that? I don't know. We have three volts on the gate, which is certainly not enough to turn this thing on. What about on this gate? That also does have three volts on it. Generally, those are connected, even though they don't look connected because they're sort of on opposite sides here. My guess is that they are connected and going to the BQ chip. And obviously we have nothing over here. So my guess is the BQ chip is turning these MOSFETs off, maybe because of a short further along the line, or as we discovered, maybe because of a faulty charger that is overshooting. But let me see what we have over here. To ground, we have 21 mega ohms. That seems pretty healthy over here. It's not like that's causing any problems. What about between the two here? Again, 18 mega ohms. And obviously here we're fine because we measured 19 volts. We have 75K. So I don't see any like huge issues in terms of shorts yet. All right, so I got basically everything unplugged from the motherboard except for like the fan and this daughter board over here. So always a good idea to just like check if any of that kind of stuff is the issue like the RAM or anything else. But no, we have the same sort of situation going on here. Let's see if we get 19 volts here now. Nope. Yeah, we're getting some like weird fluctuation. It's like kind of turning on to like three volts and then off. Let's check with the oscilloscope just to see what's going on on the gate and on like the output of the first input MOSFET here out of curiosity. So let's turn the oscilloscope on. We got Anakin in here hanging out with us. So I'm gonna probe this little point here, which should be the 20 volts. I don't know why I'm so zoomed out on this thing. Yeah, so there it is, or 19 volts, whatever. So that's looking pretty, pretty solid on the input. What is going on here? We can zoom into that a little bit more. So yeah, that's like three volts for some reason on here. Well, the reason is there's three volts on the gate, I think. So if we press this up on the gate, we've also got about three volts, which is why we're seeing three volts on the output of that. God knows why we are seeing three volts here. One of these over here, like this looks like it might be the, the charger chip. So let's zoom in on that guy see if that's the case uh, i don't think that is that says real tech that might just be the audio i see but that looks more like the audio i see so i don't know what that is all right i found the bq chip it is here so there's the charger chip let's look up the chip there bq24780s that looks very familiar i think that's a very common bq chip yeah so here it is we have ac detect on pin six so let's just see what kind of voltage we have there 
And if we read this little section here, it says when AC detect is above 2.4 volts, AC OK goes high. So we should check AC OK and AC detect here, which is pin six and five on these guys. It's gonna be pin one, two, three, four, five. So we can measure right here for AC OK and then right here for AC detect. So let's plug the charger in and let's check what we got on AC detect. So we've got 2.58, that is enough. It's above 2.4, so it's about 2.6 almost, so that should be okay. What about AC okay? What do we have here? We've got six volts there, so AC okay is high as far as I can tell. All right, so after some poking around, I found something. So I think these MOSFETs are potentially leaky between the gate here and the drain. If I measure resistance, you can see we're only getting about 12 ohms between gate and, sorry, gate and source of both of these MOSFETs here. Obviously both the gates are connected to each other of these MOSFETs and the sources here are clearly connected as well. So either this one or this one is leaky and is causing a lower resistance between the source and the gate and is pulling the gate down and preventing obviously the MOSFET from turning on fully and allowing the full voltage into the laptop. So I'm just going to pull one of these off. Let's do the smaller one first. So we got the smaller one off there. I'm gonna let the board cool down. I'm actually a little bit impatient, so I'm gonna use the little blower I have here to just cool the board off. This thing is no longer warm, and I can test resistance right away. So let's test again here. And look at that, we got 1.4 mega ohms. So that was the leaky MOSFET. And if we plug the charger in, Let's check what kind of voltage we have on this side. A, 19 volts. So very likely that was the leaky MOSFET. If we check the gate over here, yeah, we've got a healthy 24 volts. So essentially the gate needs to be higher than the source here in order to allow for this MOSFET to conduct. And then same goes for obviously this gate up here. So this gate is going to be very likely just connected to AC drive as well on the BQ chip. And if we measure it, yeah, we've got 20, 24 volts there as well. So that was for sure our problem. This is a very, very common issue with laptops that the input MOSFETs are damaged. Sometimes they short from drain to source. Sometimes they short from gate to source like that, that we saw there. So I'm just going to have to double check the little part number on this guy, see if I can find one on a board that I have lying around. If not, I will have to order one, but these things are super cheap. We can pick up the video when I have a new one of these to put on the board. All right, I'm back and we have a part as well as a few other things that we can look at as well. So I think this is the part we need for that laptop. Let's see if that is the case. Yep, here are our chips. So I ordered a few just, I was just order a few since paying for shipping anyways. Let's see what this is. Got, got two more packages here. This one is some flux. This is the YCS number one flux. So this is gonna be for a flux comparison video. And another flux. This is another Ameo flux. It's the M50, which apparently is a little bit less liquidy and more for the stuff I was trying to do with it before. So we're gonna see if we like this a little bit better. Again, this is for the flux comparison video. So keep an eye out for that. And this I'm excited about. This is a little chip holder. And it looks like the box kind of just exploded in here. <laughs> but this is from Relife and there it is. Very cool. So it's actually this little chip holder that is on a spinny thing. And I thought this would actually be nice maybe for reballing certain like square chips to put them in here. Oh, cool, you can take it off. I like this. I didn't realize you could separate these. So it's just like a little magnetic base and you can kind of spin it around and you can use this little area here or here. And I just like the low profile aspect of this versus my larger board holder, or I guess this is kind of a small board holder, all things considered, but you know what I mean? But I like the fact that it's small and when I'm doing reballing work, it's gonna be really nice to be able to like maneuver with it. And also I can't use this for reballing because the chip is recessed into this little chip holder and that will be the same case here. But if I use this little low profile recessed area here to hold the chip, a lot of chips are going to be thicker than this and I'll be able to still reball them using the stencil while holding them in place. So I'm excited to start using this. You can see there's three different sizes, small, medium, and large in the middle. And I'm thinking that I can use this to reball chips. So we'll see if that's the case. I will say that this doesn't seem like it will 
tighten in the same way. Like it's not spring loaded like this one. So we'll see if that's gonna work as well. Okay, here's a great example. I mean, this is sort of big, so I wouldn't reball this with solder paste, but let's see if this works. Oh yeah, this works great. Chip doesn't go anywhere and you can kind of like maneuver around to wick off different parts of the chip. And then you could, you know, put it here if you wanted to and reball it like this. You can see the chip is higher up than the actual holder. So you could put a stencil on this, spread some paste and reball it that way. So it looks like this is exactly what I was looking for. We have some like tinier holders here for smaller chips and medium ones here. I thought it'd be looser without the spring, but it actually works fine. So yeah, cute little chip holder. Actually, we can use this today to prep the MOSFETs to put them on the board. So we can use this to prep this guy. Shouldn't go anywhere. So I'm just making sure we get all of these little things tinned. Looks fine to me. There's quite a bit of solder on the bottom there that we could take off. And this chip holder doesn't particularly work well for tiny chips, it seems, at least like this size. All right, cool. That should be good. I just want to make sure that these pads take solder. Just with these like QFN style packages and things, it can be a bit of a pain to get solder to stick to them. So I always like to prep them like that. But now let's get some flux on here and I'm going to get the leaded solder off just by mixing in some leaded here. Now we can use the other side of that little bit of wick and get this stuff off of here. Perfect. Now we can add a little bit back. Don't want like a whole lot, but just enough like that. That's perfect. So this is going on like this. Cool, just squeeze the solder out from under there, that excess solder. I just like to line it up like that and then can just clean up the excess here that's coming out of the sides. Beautiful, that's looking good. Let me get that cleaned. All right, I believe before we were seeing a short or a low resistance between gate and source. So let's go to resistance mode here and let's give that a check. Perfect, 2.2 mega ohms. That is looking much better than whatever we had before and we should be good to test this. So I'm just gonna clean up a little bit more around here. There's still some flux. I did not make its way off the board. Let the board cool, of course. That is nice and clean. And I'm going to cool down the board and blow Kim wipes all over the place in the process. All right, so I'm not going to plug in like the battery or the RAM or anything like that. We're just simply going to plug it in with the bench power supply. So I'm gonna turn on the power supply. You're gonna see 19 volts up here. So this is how much voltage currently is live on the positive pin of the charging little adapter here that I have hooked up to my power supply right here. And the amps is how much current is being drawn by the laptop from the power supply. So when I plug this in, we should see a small current draw and we should see it jump up if it like automatically turns on. I don't have anything really attached to this storage wise. So ideally we're looking for like a bio screen or something uh, and some level of current draw. If we don't get that, we can start measuring uh, what's going on on the input circuit, but I believe this should fix the issue. So I'm gonna plug it in. We do see that small current draw and it did jump up. So I think this is starting now. I think the laptop is starting. If we look, we have a light on the power button and we get a screen, very good. So you can see it jumped directly into BIOS here and this laptop is very likely fixed. So I'm gonna turn this off. Let me get this unplugged. Turn off the power supply. And now we can plug everything back in here like the network card. And I've got my little screws and a bag. I always keep these little ESD safe bags because they're super nice to just hold screws in and just throw with the device if you're waiting for parts or anything like that. So to put this back together, I think I'm not gonna use the electric screwdriver. I wanna be controlled, especially when screwing in stuff like these little network cards and the SSD as well. All right, so we've got everything plugged in and I'm just plugging the battery here. And let's test in DC volts here, what we're getting on the positive of the battery terminal. And that is nothing because I do not have my power supply turned on. So let's try that again and check what's on here. Beautiful, we have 8.3 volts on there, 10 volts now, it's going up 11. And I believe we have a charging battery. You can see Windows is starting to boot. So this is good, you can see it's pulling about almost three amps right now at 19 volts. So it's like 50, 50 watts or something. Oh, it's doing a Windows update. I see. Mise à jour. Let's update. Mon français, c'est pas la meilleure maintenant. Je dois pratiquer. Là, my wife's correcting me.
Masculine and feminine is rough. Okay, there we go. That looks like windows to me. Can get the cover here put back on. I found that this magnet that I put on here is really nice because I can just put all of the screws that I'm using at the current time on it. And then it works really great to just like pick one, put it on the screwdriver, put it in, pick one. All right, so we can just double check with the official charger that things are working fine. It's looking good to me. And we have a charging symbol down here. So good stuff. Classic shorted input MOSFET there. This time it was from gate to source, which is definitely gonna prevent the laptop from turning on or charging. So easy little fix there. Appreciate you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.